Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, today's uh, webinar will be recorded. Um, please uh, drop off if you're not okay with that. Um, down at the bottom of your uh, screen, you can uh, turn off your microphone and your video if you'd like. Um, for this webinar, please use the chat session um, up in the uh, right-hand corner of your screen to ask questions. Um, we welcome questions, so please don't hesitate to, to, to type in there and we'll get to them. Um, today's, uh, the impetus behind uh, today's webinar is that, you know, we know we, we can't be, uh, we can't answer our phone 24 seven. And some of you are in search and rescue, some, uh, you know, there's all kinds of uh, after hours needs. And we want to make sure that we don't ever leave anybody in the lurch with these. Uh, we want your, your software to work. Um, for you whenever you need it. And so these are this uh, webinar today is going to go over some tips to help you keep your software running optimally. Uh, some of the it'll we'll talk about some of the things you'll you'll look to to just that would be your first uh, go to's if you have any problems, uh, things to check that kind of thing. Um, so it'll help you maybe uh, be able to solve a, a problem on your own if, if, if we aren't available. Um, your, our presenter today is Ed LaCire. Many of you have probably talked to Ed over the years. He has been with TNP since the beginning of time. If Ed doesn't know how to solve a problem, there's uh, with TNP, we've got much bigger problems. They're probably outside of the of the software. So he's um, he's who we all go to when we have questions. So I hope that you will um, enjoy the the his presentation today, and definitely feel free to ask questions. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to a veteran TNP employee, Ed LaCire. Hey, thanks, Paige. I see a lot of familiar uh, names on the on the chat today, so that's that's wonderful, uh, you know, uh, to see uh, so many longtime customers sticking with us uh, through all these years of different owners and uh, different uh, configurations of Terrain Navigator Pro. So uh, just uh, happy to uh, welcome everybody. Um, so uh, as Paige indicated, uh, I was asked to kind of give a, a presentation on basically what what causes my phone to ring. <laughs> um, and uh, and if you've uh, in recent years uh, spoken with Lisa, um, you know, uh, who also uh, is becoming quite the veteran TNP person herself, um, what uh, goes on to uh, you know, on a day to day basis. Uh, that uh, we can try to uh, hopefully uh, solve some of these problems in advance. So, um, and uh, and at the same time, how to best use Terrain Navigator Pro. So I'll, I'll just kind of start with um, the Terrain Navigator Pro website or terrainnavigator.com. So I'm just gonna uh, switch to that. I hope everybody can see my screen. If not, show uh, be sure you're uh, watching uh, my presentation. All right, so here I am at terrainnavigator.com, and I need something to do with the website. I don't know what I need to do. Let's figure that out. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to press the login button. And all right, uh, I don't know. What's my username? Uh, what's my password? I don't remember. That is our number one call, folks. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so how do how do we solve this? Well. There is a forgot your password link, and if you go there, it actually tells you. Please press the back button and enter in the username and password displayed in the subscription and user account preference of Terrain Navigator Pro Desktop. <laughs> really? Is it that simple? I go back to Terrain Navigator Pro. This is a program that everybody knows and loves. I go to File, Preferences. Subscription and user account. And look at that. My username and my password is, oh, Ed's password. <laughs> All right, so let's try that. You look higher. Ed's password. And I'm in. How about that? So, and no, I don't want to update my password lock system with a password that I'm about, I will change immediately following this call. So, um, like I say, uh, that is by far our, our number one 
problem. You, why you might get into the need to get into the website? There's a lot of reasons why you need to get into the website, but uh, that's uh, that's that's it. And remember that Train Navigator Pro, that password and that username goes across all your programs. It goes across the Train Navigator Pro desktop. It goes across the um, the mobile apps for people that use it and the terrainnavigator.com website. All right, so now I'm on the website. Um, the next thing that we get asked about quite a bit is how to renew your subscription. Well, right there on the uh, homepage, once you've logged in is subscriptions. And you will see right here, the subscriptions now, your page will look a little different because of obviously uh, I've got uh, a couple of uh, the, the, uh, the whole US available to me and all the various add-ons. But suppose I wanted to renew the entire United States. I could just click that. It'll allow me to put in my expiration date, hit next, and then it will take me through the, the purchase process. So again, when it comes time to renew, log in, click subscriptions, select I want to renew my subscription, and then ch just check off what you need to do to review, to, to renew. Uh, if you want to add new states to your subscription, suppose you've moved or you're getting a new client in a new state, you choose under subscriptions, I want, I would like to choose, uh, purchase additional maps. Click that, click buy now. And then I can, let's say I want, I'm, you know, I'm moving to Montana because it's beautiful out there. And then I can click there and then proceed through the purchasing process. Again, it will just ask you for your credit card, all that sort of stuff. Um, when it comes time to install that state, states are installed under file. And then set up states and regions right here. So file setup states and regions, and then it will take you through the process of actually installing the state after you've purchased it. And that's also good for when you install a Terrain Navigator Pro on a new computer, uh, then you would get, install your first state and then you have to add additional states that you've purchased or acquired over the years. Uh, that's it's all the same process and it's all done over the internet now. There's no stacks of CDs, you know, those of you remember when we had, uh, I think it was 24 CDs that made up Texas or something ridiculous like that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot easier now with, uh, with the internet uh, distribution. Um, next, I wanted to cover, um, uh, oh, I've already got a question, and uh, Lisa uh, uh, wants to me to clarify, which is a great clarification. Lisa, by all means, jump in because you you see this a lot as 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 much as I do. Uh, when you do give your credit card information, um, you know, make sure that uh, when you're putting in the address that you're putting in for the credit card, uh, that it's 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 you know your your billing address and not uh, the address of the state that you're purchasing or something like that. You just be very careful when you're you're putting your um, your address information in there to make sure that it's uh, it covers uh, the intent. Uh, sometimes the autofills will, you know, Google Chrome has wonderful autofill features, and you know we know and love them, but they can also you know cause headaches if you're not careful. Uh, Lisa, if you want to jump in and, and clarify if I if I didn't catch anything that uh, you wanted uh, said about that. Otherwise, I'll move on. Uh, let's see. I wanted to cover resetting your password. Okay, so you have to reset your password for whatever reason. Um, again, I, the the first order of attack is to go and get your get your stuff from file preferences, subscription, and user account because there there it's it's there. You know, we make the assumption that your PC is secure so that you can see what your password is. Everywhere else, it's always encrypted. We cannot see your password. We don't know what your password is. So um, if you need to reset it, you have to log in. And then you go to your administration page. And this is where you get to control all of your users, 
if you've got a multi-user account, most of you will only have a single user account, your licenses, and right here, you can pick reset your password. So I could change my password right now and it would change it. And remember, now you have to update your password on the desktop, on your mobile phone, and anytime you log in at terrainnavigator.com, it's that one password. Um, so this is also where you can add users and all the other things that uh, uh, if you've got a multi-user account, it's all, all here. If you need your product ID for some reason in the future, you can click down here and there's your product ID. Okay, so it's all it's all here under your account administration page on um, terrainnavigator.com. Um, sometimes here, this will I'm going to open this up and it will show me under installations the PCs and the phones that I have Terrain Navigator installed on. Now, uh, if you need to remove something for any reason. Um, for example, and um, I'm, I'm going to pick on Apple a little bit. Apple is a little weird in that um, they are they don't keep track of when apps are uninstalled. Um, so if you move to a new phone, and sometimes even when the phone gets updated, it will end up uh, creating new entries in here. Um, uh, the part of Apple's legacy is that they do not allow uh, app. Uh, developers to uh, track phones uh, individually. Uh, it, if you get caught doing that, they'll they'll slap your wrist. Um, so uh, that's why this sort of thing happens. So I've, I've only got one iPhone, um, but I've got two entries here for it. I'm just going to go and delete. Actually, I'm going to delete both of them. Because guess what? The next time I go to log into Terrain Navigator, doc, uh, Terrain Navigator on the iPhone, it's going to automatically regenerate that. This just keeps it from getting over the limit of how many licenses that you're entitled to have. Uh, so that uh, if you just keep logging in, you can uh, just delete the ones that uh, you don't know. Uh, if you're not sure, just delete it, you know. Um, and, and for example, I'll delete this music computer here. And next time I go to use it, it will let it log in. Um, only because I have a, a special limit of five on my account though. Uh, normally, uh, you guys would have only two, and then it wouldn't it wouldn't prevent the third login. So that's all all that is is under here under users. You can delete things, and that's also a good way to to troubleshoot if you're not sure what licenses you're using or what computers things are on. You can delete everything and then just kind of start things up again and see what populates. Also very handy here. It tells you what version of the software you're running. That's how we know when you haven't updated. Um, and believe me, that's the first thing we check when somebody calls in for service is what, what version of the software you're running. Because um, if we don't, uh, if you're not running the current software, um, there's a good chance that uh, the current software will, will address whatever uh, the issue is. Um, and we'll get to uh, getting updates in uh, just a second. Uh, and updates actually ties right into the next thing I wanted to talk about here, the downloads page. So you can come over here and click downloads. And these are the downloads specific to the Terrain Navigator Pro PC software. There's nothing in here that applies to the mobile apps. The mobile apps are all dealt with through the phone. Uh, and even that, there's only one download that you really need to know about. And it's this one right here, the upgrade. And you click that button and no matter what you've got, no matter, uh, even if you haven't installed Terrain Navigator Pro, believe it or not, it will upgrade you from nothing to the current version. That's also a good reset if something's gone wrong. Uh, you can just go in here, click the download, and that's make sure that you're running the latest version of the software, all the latest fixes. Um, you know, over the years, uh, we've made a lot of improvements to the installer. Um, to make sure that this is a streamlined process as possible. And, you know, this uh, installer system really is the um, kind of pinnacle of that to make sure that everything is up to date. You can uh, get the latest software and uh, everything is, um, it work, just works seamlessly by getting that download. Now, there are other downloads here. And, you know, there are, you can get 
NGS updates. Uh, you can get the ISO images. If you really want the old DVDs, you can download the, all the old DVDs. Um, but almost always, there's no need to do that. Uh, the, the only reason you would possibly want to do that is if you're dealing with a large state, you know, a, a bunch of large states, let's say California and Texas, and you were going to install it over multiple computers and you had poor internet service. Then you might want to do, you know, make some DVDs or something like that. Um, but other than that, the, the right, almost always the right answer is this uh, uh, installer system, which is this, this download right here. Uh, let's see, downloads, NG oh, I'll just cut, talk about the NGS updates. Um, I, I guess I, a lot of times people ask about those. Those NGS data sheets correspond to these um, red triangles or NGS uh, benchmarks. If you've ever been out hiking, if you're not familiar with it, these, you get to the top of the mountain, you see this little disc and everybody's taking their picture at the disc. Well, that's what these all correspond to with the little discs that the US um, has placed along you know, throughout the country. Uh, and this is the data sheet on that particular disk. And uh, we update these on a regular basis. You see that uh, mine has been updated to October 2020. And how did I get that update? Well, I had gone to, in this case, New England. And let's see, do, do, do. Yep, and then down here under New England, gotten the NGS updates. So if those data sheets are important to you, that's how you update them. If you know that you're curious about them, that's how you update them. And if you're not curious about them and they're in the way, as always, you can go to view, excuse me, uh, yeah, view layer size visibility and turn off the benchmarks. And then all the little triangles go away. All right, so that covers everything uh, on as far as terrainnavigator.com and getting updates. The other thing uh, for getting updates on Terrain Navigator, uh, the desktop, is um, under File, Preferences, Internet Access, and Map Cache. Uh, there is an option here to check for updates. This is how you get your updates automatically. Uh, and there's a, an option to check for updates. However, um, I'll be honest with you, this is not the most reliable way to do it. The sheer, the, the sheer fire way to do it is to, again, uh, get, the, get it from the, uh, from the website right here. Um, I think now would be an important, a uh, good, good point to pause for questions about anything I've covered about getting updates, making sure your software is up to date, um, logging in, uh, to the website. If you have any questions, go feel free to put them in the chat. Um, otherwise I will continue onward. Remember, I can look you up now. You know how I can look you up and see uh, what version of the software you're running. So make sure you're up to date. OK, uh, since we have no questions, um, OK, Paige has a question. Can I touch quickly on how subscriptions dates sync when you add new states, et cetera? Um, yeah, when you do renew your subscription, if you're adding states, we have a, constri a, con a construct in the system that for any given state, if you have multiple copies of that state, for whatever reason, it has to have the same expiration date. If you don't, things funky things start happening. Um, and then as a service, when you go to renew, you, if you have multiple states, you can set your renewal date. That's why um, you can do this you know, here. If you had two different states, um, uh, in this case, they both have the same expiration date. Uh, um, hopefully past my retirement date. Um, but anyhow, there's uh, these expiration dates. If these were two different dates and you wanted to get them to align for bookkeeping purposes, that's why you can go in here and change those dates. Uh, and then the, the uh, website will automatically figure out the, the right prorated cost. Um, so uh, that was a lesson we learned, um, you know, back you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, back in the map tech days, that a lot of people preferred to have, uh, you know, expiration dates that align. Uh, so you can uh, set that all up uh, to, to do so, again, uh, just by uh, covering that there. Um, and uh, like I say, also, 
you know, when you're within a state, uh, you know, you have an add-on, you know, you add the uh, parcel data, for example, that has to expire at the same time. If you don't renew one with the other, then it, it just, we, they have to, they have to renew together. You know, consider it like uh, if you have your cable bill and then you add HBO, you add HBO and then HBO gets billed to the end of the month and then you can take HBO off or you can uh, continue adding it. So that's that. Um, the question, uh, Fred comes in, does the 12.2 update supply new aerial and or satellite imagery for all states that you subscribe to? 12.21, uh, yes. Uh, there were some older versions of the software um, that point to older servers, and those servers uh, still serve up old data. So if you're running 12.21, it's going to include the access to the latest imagery maps, what have you, that you're uh, entitled to, uh, whether it be the um, you know, the topo maps obviously aren't being updated by the USGS anymore, but the aerial ortho photos, uh, we update those. Um, well, we update them once a year roughly, but uh, the source data comes out usually once every two years um, where we've, uh, we're actually in the process of uh, doing the um, 2019 data right now. Um, I see Doug is on the line and Doug works really hard to get that <laughs> get that process so that the photos look good and work seamlessly within Terrain Navigator Pro. Uh, the satellite imagery, uh, we license from a third party. Uh, we get the latest from them, whatever they serve up. Um, and then uh, the other street types, uh, the street map and the uh, terrain map types, those are updated uh, very, very uh, regularly uh, by the, the map uh, uh, map provider that we license the data from. So uh, that's how you get the you know the latest maps. But to get the latest maps, yes, definitely make sure that you're running version 12.2.1. And Fred, I hope that answers your question. Um, if not, uh, feel free to type something in and uh, I'll continue moving on. While we're talking about updates, um, let's talk about the phone. And for those of you who do use the TNP mobile app, um, I'll just drag it on over right now. There it is. Uh, so here's uh, my Android phone shared on my screen. Um, the current uh, information, uh, can always be found under settings. There's the version. And then uh, if you go to Google Play or the uh, Apple phone store, it will show you what the version is uh, for current. Uh, if you're not current, you can download it right there. But typically, uh, mobile devices automatically update. For better or for worse, that's what they do. Um, so unless you've explicitly disabled um, updating on your phones, um, then uh, the, the app will automatically update. Uh, we just did a, a release of the mobile app uh, about um, two weeks ago, uh, both on the Android and the iPhone. Uh, we are actually uh, in the process of doing an iPhone update uh, right now. There should be an up another update coming out within the next week or so uh, on the iPhone side. Um, so uh, just keep an eye out for that. Um, and like I said, it should just up, update automatically. Uh, but if, if need be, you can always you know, go to your Google store. And check to see what you've got for Terrain Navigator Pro. Now again, I've got a beta version because that's who I am. Um, anyhow, oh, and Feel free to like, like us. <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo. All right. Any questions about phone updates? How often is the parcel layer? Okay, back to Fred. Uh, how often is property ownership info? That we get from our uh, data provider roughly three to four times a year. When, when we get it from them, uh, we start a process to convert their internal data, their external data uh, database into Terrain Navigator Pro. Um, we are actually due for an update from them. Um, and um, uh, 
in fact, I, I can't say, I, Doug will attest that I just asked him just the other day to double check to see what the latest uh, parcel data is so that we can get uh, get uh, cracking on uh, providing the, you know, whatever updates they have. Um, now, that's what we get from them. They have an update schedule that um, provides um, uh, updates, uh, you know, uh, basically an account per county basis. Um, and that's not something that we have a, a direct uh, visibility to, um, but uh, they have their upsc update schedule and then that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, this, uh, I got another question. The sort of all the active projects on the phone no longer what works, should I reinstall the app? Yeah, if you have any sort of problems with the iPhone or Android, um, the first core, the, the, you know, kind of the first step would be to uninstall and reinstall the app. Uh, the only exception, and I'm going to cover this when we uh, when we talk about project synchronization errors. The only exception to that is going to be if you've got a synchronization problem, because if you uninstall the app uh, and you your data is not already on our servers, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, um, then uh, you run the risk of losing that data. And you know, if you've you've been out in the field and collecting tracks for several hours, the last thing you want to hear from me is you got to go recollect that data. So um, I'll, I'll cover that in a second. But uh, that that um, Fred is uh, asking about parcel updates in 12.21. The, the parcel updates are separate from the software updates. The parcel updates come through automatically. Um, so as long as you've got, again, a current version of the software, uh, if as soon as those updates are available, you it will either occur seamlessly or you may get a message when you start up Terrain Navigator Pro that says updating parcels or something becomes available. Or when you go to find, if you've done uh, a find and then choose uh, find parcels, uh, it will say, hey, there's new updated data. Do you want to download it? You know, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it just happens automatically. It's not something that is, is tied to the software. Uh, that said, I always recommend having the latest software because there could be uh, issues that we've identified. Um, you know, for just a, a small example, is 12.2.1 has a specific fix in it that uh, makes it more compatible with certain internet connections. Um, and um, so, if you're having internet connection problems, you're not going to get updates. So then you're not going to get updates to your parcel data or your maps. So that's why it's important to keep the software up to date, uh, for example. Uh, again, feel free to jump in with questions. Meanwhile, I am going to cover uh, the next uh, major topic I wanted to talk about was getting help, uh, specifically using the knowledge base. Um, if you've emailed in for support, uh, emailed either uh, uh, myself or, uh, or, or Lisa, Oftentimes, we'll send you a link to the uh, support knowledge base. And that's found under terrainnavigator.com. You don't have to log in to get there, but under support, and we'll just choose TMP desktop software. And then you will see uh, user voice, which is our um, support system, uh, which contains our knowledge base. Uh, the knowledge base is broken up into major categories, including general questions or fa FAQs. Uh, installation, downloads, that sort of stuff. Maps, update, um, updates related to maps, how to navigate, that sort of thing. Printing and publishing, so uh, you know anything uh, related to printing. Uh, the GPS connectivity, becoming less and less of an issue nowadays as people are migrating to using their phones as opposed to garments, but uh, you know that's still all there. Um, import and export, that includes stuff like GIS importing, uh, you know, GPX files, different you know, formats, it's all, all there. Then there's all the help specific to the uh, iPhone and Android uh, app, the help on the website itself, and then our um, section on uh, user guides, um, videos, and so forth. Um, and I'm just going to call this one out. I'm going to click on that link. I'm going to scroll up back up to the top of the page. If you are the sort of person that likes a printed manual, um, you can download a printable manual from Terrain, for Terrain Navigator Pro right here. Um, you know, it's, it's lengthy, <laughs> but it's there. Um, we also have a, a, an older uh, search and rescue uh, management, emergency management reference guide. Um, 
that has that's a little outdated at this point, but it's still got a lot of good tips on it. But I want to call your attention to this one here, which is instruction videos and uh, online blogs. Every once in a while, either we'll release uh, videos uh, as far as our like this webinar, um, or uh, other people have done videos that just are train Navigator Pro enthusiasts. Uh, if we find out about them, we link them on this page uh, or blog entries for people that have written about Terrain Navigator Pro um, in, in a uh, you know a instructional manner. So uh, if you know of something that's not on this page, mm -hmm. let me know so I can update it. Uh, and uh, you know, by all means, if you feel so led, we're not going to stop you from telling people how to use our software. Uh, you know, we, we're we're happy to uh, let that. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, Gary's asking about projects. I'm going to get there, Gary. <laughs> uh, let's see. So the, uh, as far as the knowledge base, um, it's also got a nice search feature. So if I wanted to learn about projects, for example, And then my favorite article, Managing Projects, Splitting the Default Project, Project Synchronization, and Other Tips. And we're we'll going to talk about that later. But the point is that there's a good search there. Um, uh, there's also our feedback forum. And here's where you can click under Give Feedback. If you've got an idea how we can make Terrain Navigator Pro better, feel free to put it in. However, Chances are we've probably heard it before. And you say, hey, oh, I really want, I want to edit more than one marker at a time. Vote for it. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, you know, okay, I'll put, and I say, okay, I've, well, I it would ask you for, I'd ask you for your email address, so we'll let you know. But the point is, you can vote for, for features that you want to see us add. Um, that just because it's got the number one uh, feature or request doesn't mean we're going to do it immediately. It just means that it's high on our priority list too. Um, you know, there's a reason why this is a, this is a very difficult particular feature to add. That's why it's uh, we haven't done it. Um, but if you want to, you know, specify things, um, that's that's how it's all here. Um, you know, it's it's a really a lot easier for everyone if you just put it in the forum or in the feedback forum, or vote for or you know if you've got a new idea or vote for existing ideas. Um, trust me, I review this whenever we decide we're going to do a new release of Terrain Navigator Pro, and then we see what we can cross off the list. Um, so that's a, a real uh, a, a real um, a way of providing feedback that's meaningful to us. Uh, let's see, boom, and then finally, the contact support. Um, I think one of the, the biggest uh, benefits of, where is it? Okay, it's because my screen is full, I have to scroll a little bit. I think one of the biggest benefits of Terrain Navigator Pro is you're not, you, you know, you're talking to, when you do call or email, you get real help, or at least we really try to give you real help, you know, we're not here at you know twenty four seven, but uh, we do our best to to get back to people as soon as we can. You know, uh, we don't have a call center. You know, we don't have uh, you know people that you know you have to you press a bazillion buttons to get their live operator, only to tell you that uh, well you know we can't help you, uh, and then escalate it. Um, you know, it's Lisa and me and Doug uh, and and Paige to a certain degree also on the, especially on the my topo side, um, and you know. We're really here. We're not. It's not. Uh, you're not calling off to um, a third third country or a third party. Um, we're the real people that design and use the software uh, every day. So you're talking to real people. You give us a. You know, send us a message. You know, we don't even. Uh, we tend to. We tend to shy away from canned answers too. You know, we we, for the most part. Uh, oops. Oh, good. Um, for the most part, we uh, really. Um, you know, write and think about our answers to make sure that people get, uh, you know, the, the, this, the sort of service that you pay for. I mean, you know, Train Navigator Pro is not a, a is not a cheap product, and we recognize that. So we want to give you the service that you you deserve. Okay, uh, and Dennis uh, agrees, and I'm glad I'm glad uh, glad to hear that. Uh, okay, uh, top issues. 
Um, so this was going to be my top. I think I got five or six issues. Um, if you hear an alarm going off, uh, I was warned. You know, part of COVID is I work from home. Well, I've been actually been working from home for a long time now. But uh, uh, I, uh, my apartment building is doing uh, fire testing, apparently, like today. Perfect timing. Uh, but I'm sure everybody in this COVID world has had a cat walk across the screen or a dog bark in the middle of an important meeting. So uh, a little grace there would be appreciated. Uh, anyhow, uh, installing on a new PC was going to be my first thing. That's, again, um, a very, very common call. We get this all the time. And a lot of it is you don't remember what your product ID is. Well, if you still have Terrain Navigator Pro installed on the computer, you'll find it under Preferences, Subscription User Account, your product IDs for all your states are listed here with your username and password. Um, so if you're moving to a new computer and you know, still have access to the old computer, that's where you can get all that information. And then how to get going? Well, again, get back to the top of the page, under downloads. And then in the download section, once it refreshes, um, it would be the, there are two download options there that would apply. Either work e equally well. One is the uh, fresh install, one is the update. They, they both basically do the same thing. Um, and so, um, you know, either, either of these options will work. Okay. The only thing that I would, again, shy people away from is grabbing the ISO image. And that's only if you really wanted to make a DVD and uh, go, go down that road. Okay. Uh, then uh, adding states, again, um, a very common question, file, set up states and regions. You know, once you've purchased it, it's there. Oh, and by the way, as far as adding states or regions, um, if I go back to my support page and I say add state, installation, how to install a new state or region into Terrain Navigator Pro. And it takes you right through the purchase process and then how to set up states and regions. And right there, step by step. And hits all the common questions. So that's uh, you know how you can help yourself. Again, we're here to help. You know, you need you know, your question, you can't find your product ID, whatever, email us. We'll 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 get back, we'll get that information to you. Need to help reset your password, we're happy to help you do that. Um, but uh, these are ways you, you can do it yourself uh, and uh, save yourself some time. Um, let's see, adding states. Oh, and the other thing that happens uh, quite often is uh, I get the question of, okay, I've got all my years worth of data on this old computer. I want to move it to a new computer. How do I do that? Well, um, we get into transferring projects. So let's say search for transfer project. Transferring project layers to a new PC. Look at that. And right there is uh, the, the article that tells you exactly what to do. Uh, what files you need, what files you don't need. Uh, and then uh, it will even link you to um, the, the topic I think we're going to end up spending a lot of time on is, I don't know what a project is and I've never used them. How, what do I do? Or uh, my projects are too big or what about all that stuff? So we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so uh, I'll just check to see if we have any questions so far on anything. I don't see any new questions, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, the next, the next common qu question I get, somebody double clicks on Terrain Navigator Pro and this does not happen. You do not see a map <laughs> and instead you get not responding across the top. Um, that is a situation that occurs, you know, first of all, I, 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 unfortunately not responding and how Windows handles it is a... It's unfortunate how uh, how that occurs. Not responding means that this particular window within Windows is not responding to mouse clicks. In other words, when you click on that window, it's not prepared to take uh, input from the from the customer. So, as such, Windows is warning you, "Hey, I can't do anything with this. It's busy doing something." 
And then Windows, in its infinite wisdom, decides, do you want to kill it? Now, in many cases, that is the right answer. Um, you know, in many cases, programs programmers are not perfect. Computers are not perfect. Computers do exactly what programmers tell them to do. And since programmers are not perfect, computers aren't perfect. Um, so as such, uh, sometimes you know things go wrong, things hang up, and so forth, and that's the only way out. However, in Terrain Navigator Pro, when you get a not responding when Terrain Navigator Pro is starting, it actually means that it's trying to, it usually means it's trying to download new data. And because of an error condition, it hasn't put up the warning that says it's downloading data. And because that's occurring and it's occurring in the background, Terrain Navigator Pro is locked out but it's busy trying to download that data set. And this really can happen uh, if you're uh, uh, dealing with Terrain Navigator Pro and you have a, a wonky internet connection or you've been online, offline, or, uh, or Terrain Navigator Pro crashes or your computer crashes for whatever reason. Um, that not responding when it starts up, um, if it's happened to you, you'll notice it takes about 10 to 15 minutes and it will eventually go. Um, I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating to me when it happens to me too, uh, but un it's, a, it's, it's a very uh, unfortunate side effect. What it's doing behind the scenes is it's actually updating the Aerial Ortho Photo Library uh, and the USGS Topo Library, but it's, it's the Aerial Ortho Photo Library. Um, so it's, it's part of the process to make sure that you get those, those latest photos as soon as we put them out. Um, well, we have to check, and uh, it's supposed to happen uh, when the program's running, but uh, under these certain circumstances, it can occur during startup. So when it does, just be patient. It will start. Uh, but if it takes more than 15 minutes, uh, give me a call, and uh, we'll we'll sort it out. I'm happy to do it. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, boo, 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 boo. yeah, page is concerned about time. That's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, yeah, okay, we're, uh, yeah, we are going a little slower than I'd like. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Uh, internet right here tells you what Terrain Navigator Pro thinks of your internet. If that goes red, Terrain Navigator Pro isn't getting updates, it isn't getting maps, it's not synchronizing. Uh, you know, so, the only way to restart your internet is to restart Terrain Navigator Pro. Um, so uh, Terrain Navigator Pro does not keep checking to see if the, you know, even if you just, you know, literally or figuratively pull the plug, put it back in, uh, that internet light will not come back green until you've restarted Terrain Navigator Pro. So if you're getting weird blotch, missing maps, things don't seem to be working right, check your internet light. It's going to, and then uh, restart accordingly. Um, if you're always, if you're always in a situation where Terrain Navigator Pro is not going to be connected to the internet for uh, an extended period of time, turn it off right there. Uh, and that's going to save a bunch of time because Terrain Navigator Pro isn't going to keep trying to download maps. It's not going to keep trying to connect. It's not going to try to find updates. It's just going to, you know, run offline. So if you're going to be using Terrain Navigator Pro without an internet connection, just turn it off right there. Um, and that's also a good tip if you've got an intermittent internet connection, um, because if you're, uh, if, you know, some people have, you know, don't, you know, don't have big you know, fat internet connections all the time. And we, you know, so we have, uh, put into Terrain Navigator Pro a lot of things to keep it, to keep it running in those conditions. But the best thing to do is turn off Terrain Navigator Pro's connection to the internet so that it uh, doesn't keep trying to check when there's a inter intermittent connection. Oh, and by the way, back over to the knowledge base, let's search in internet. EMP's internet status is red or can't access aerial photos. Uh, that tells you how to troubleshoot when you've got a real internet problem, you know, security, all that sort of stuff, uh, virus stuff can, uh, cause problems with uh, Terrain Navigator Pro's internet. You work in a lockdown IT environment, um, you know, connecting, you know, through some VPN, a third party, you know, what IP addresses do you need to poke through holes through firewalls? It's all covered in that article. 
Um, and then also how to use map packs when you don't have an internet connection. And that also covers intermittent internet connections as well. Uh, so that's that's where you can get more information on that. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, I'm just going to touch on on probably my favorite and yet least favorite um, topic uh, under fa uh, frequently asked questions. Video and printer driver updates, how to apply them to improve Terrain Navigator. Uh, it's becoming less and less of an issue over, over time, but uh, certainly it does wreak its ugly head from time to time. Um, I'll talk to a customer on the phone and I'll say it's, you know, and they'll say it's doing X and I'll say, I've never heard that before. <laughs> and, you know, it, it could be, you know, it's drawing funny. It's just shutting down repeatedly in, 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 in odd locations. Um, the, my first answer is always make sure your video drivers are up to date. The video drivers and your printer drivers, if it involves printing, um, that's your go between between the operating system and the, the physical device. And those drivers, again, are written by humans and they're not perfect. And uh, from time to time, they update them and fix issues that uh, occur. And uh, you know, I, I hear this often enough, you know, uh, things like, well, it only happens with Terrain Navigator Pro. But the reality is if I'm re recommending printer drivers and or video drivers, I'm saying, yeah, but it's not happening to, you know, three or five or 10,000 customers. It's something that's uh, you know, specific to your situation. And drivers are almost always the number one reason um, that, you know, there are computer specific issues. Um, so just keep those, keep, keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that you keep those up to date. Don't count on Windows to keep your drivers up to date. Don't count on auto update programs. Um, you know, go straight to the manufacturer. If you've got a Dell, Dell is actually really good. Um, you can, uh, they, they've got, uh, you put in your service code and it will give you a list of all the downloads and updates for your particular computer. Or if you, you know, you have an NVIDIA video card, go to NVIDIA's website, go to the manufacturer's website and download the updates uh, for your uh, devices uh, directly. Uh, Epson printer, go to Epson's website. You get the idea. Uh, just say, uh yeah do, 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 do. when tmp okay back to the not responding uh if if it's uh not not responding should you go out and get a drink wait uh if it's during startup yes so if you click the icon and uh it's start and uh the window is not responding to uh um, mouse clicks it's downloading something yeah go get a cup of coffee um but if your internet connection is down um, then it will actually won't happen because if your internet connection is completely down, then it will not be trying to download that update. So um, that's how it how it works. Uh, if it happens frequently, then I would look at um, yes, there's something wrong with your internet connection most likely. If it, if you're constantly getting not responding um, when it starts up, you know, if it happens occasionally, then that's one thing. But if it's happening uh, repeatedly let me know and we'll see what uh, what might be going wrong uh, let's see boo, 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 boo. video projects using projects that's where we get to um, that okay um, so yeah terrain navigator pro as you know or should know is um, you, you have a every collection of markers roots tracks uh, you know uh, labels anything that you draw on the Mac, uh, excuse me, on the map, is uh, drawn into a project. Um, and uh, so on the desktop, uh, you manage projects under layers, manage projects. And you'll see that I have a whole bunch of projects, you know, from, you know, test projects, things that, uh, you know, just a few things that come up. And then my uh, personal hobby is a, a railroad that I help manage. And you'll see that I have a lot of projects that I use just for that railroad. Um, so, uh, as such, uh, you'll see uh, that I recommend projects are best when they're the smaller, the better. You know, uh, how small? Eh, it's it's really hard to say because the other end of it is unless you're using project synchronization, there is no hard limit to the number of uh, the amount of data that can get in the project. You know, that being said, um, the, the, the 
when we talk about amount of data in a project, you know, this particular project I have up right here is a very simple project. And I can tell it's going to work very well because I've got one point and I've got a track with, well, let's find out. Edit uh, track and it's going to, I only got 10 track points. So in this, this project, I've only got 11 points of data that Terrain Navigator Pro has to process and store and synchronize. I've got this uh, particular project synced on my phone. And, uh, you know, it's all, um, it's all there. So uh, the, the, my point is, you know, it's, this is going to work very, very well because it's nice and small and tidy. Uh, but if you get, you know, if I took this track tool, for example, and I decide that I want to trace this contour line, and I'm clicking and dragging on this contour line, and yeah, I'm just going and really slow. And, yeah, okay, right there. Just that much. Finish that. Right click and uh, edit track. 357 track points have just been placed. So you can see how quickly when you do that sort of stuff, things can, can get uh, out of ha hand. Now, how many track points can Terrain Navigator Pro handle? Probably about 50,000 before you get into trouble. Um, but that's over the entire project. And again, specific to, um, um, uh, specific to uh, project synchronization. Uh, if you have, you know, if you're not using synchronization, then you can usually go to town. Um, but again, I don't recommend it. Uh, it uh, the analogous, uh, analogy, and it's not a perfect analogy by any stretch of the imagination, but um, in the knowledge base here that I talk about managing projects, splitting up default projects, all this stuff, um, the, the analogy I use is, is it's almost as if you use Microsoft Word, but instead of writing, when you write a letter to a new letter to somebody, you just uh, keep uh, typing into that same document over and over and over again, and then just print out the pages you need. Um, it would be very inefficient to use Word that way. You could do it, um, but it would be inefficient. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the rule of thumb, the more projects, the better, um, if, you can, if you can do it. That, that's the, the, the basic rule of thumb. Um, and I, 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 I'll just pause here if anyone has any comments or questions about projects before I talk about project synchronization and how to how to manage that because we're running kind of short on time. We want to call call this at uh, at one o'clock my time. Um, I'm not seeing any questions yet, so uh, feel free to hop on. Um, project synchronization. Um, oh yeah, great great question uh, or comment. Gary and I was gonna I was gonna bring that changing tracks to roots helps yes that's a huge uh, way to deal with this so uh, let's take this uh, track that I have for example and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna instead uh, take it and I'm gonna create a route from it and then you get this conversion thing here um, my favorite is to go create waypoints as needed to keep root within 50 feet of the line. Okay, and why do I pick 50 feet? Because that's that's pretty much within the tolerances of a USGS map, GPS, that sort of thing. I mean, yeah, you could go down to 10, but 50 is a good number. And it's gonna make a new route out of that track. And it tells me that it took that 300 and something way, uh, track, uh, point track and converted it down to 12 waypoints. Okay, and you'll see the two of them are overlaid. Now I can take the original track and I can hide it or delete it. You know, in this case, I'll just delete it. It leaves me with a route that follows the basic gist of that contour line. Yeah, it's not quite perfect. So if I wanted that, that little bend in there, then that's when you get into the, you know, greater than, you know, maybe 10 feet. And then I could edit the route and turn off the waypoint names and waypoint symbols. And if I wanted to make it, you know, red, like every other track that, you know, I've got, you know, I can do all that stuff. And sure enough, it's now a route, but it's a, it was generated from the track. And instead of being 346 uh, points, again, I can hit the information and it's telling me there's only 12. And I happened to click on number five. 
Oh, and the benefit of this is, of course, now I can take that waypoint and I can move it. So that covers you for track editing as well. So that's how you can uh, really um, uh, uh, save a lot of data within Train Navigator Pro. Uh, or if you've got your, your mind, you really want this back as a track, I can go and then create a track from it. And now I've got the track and the route, and then I could take the route and delete the route. And so now it's back as a track. So that's a good way to um, to save a lot of data. And again, it's going to be 12 track points instead of 300 and something. Um, so that really helps with um, uh, if you've got a lot of data. You, know, you went out in the field and you collected uh, with your GPS, you know, whether a Garmin or with a TNP mobile app, and you had it set to a very high, you know, collect data every second or every, you know, two feet or something like that. You know, you're collecting a lot of track points. That's going to synchronize very poorly, and then it's also going to, um, yeah, uh, you know, you know, create a lot of extra data uh, and a lot of erroneous data. To be honest with you, uh, if you're dealing with a GPS and the satellites are moving around and they do their thing, and it's only accurate within 50 meters anyway, you know, um, you're going to end up with a lot of extra track points. And that's part of you know that that conversion tool. And I'll just show it again. Hey Ed, we've got yeah. a. I'm just giving you a five minute warning here. Five minute warning. I'm with you. I'm, I, this is basically the last topic, so we're we're good okay. to go. Um, and uh, yeah, if people have questions, feel free to add them in um, at this point, especially. But uh, again, create route from that track. A lot of options there for when you do collect a lot of data. And you want to uh, thin it out. Um, that's that's how. That's why this is there, and it, this 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 works really really well. Um, and the good thing is that you're creating a new object from the old object. Uh, it doesn't convert. It creates a new one. So if you didn't like the results, just delete it and then try it again until you get the results that you're looking for. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Using project project synchronization error. So when things go wrong with project synchronization, uh, I hate to say the default option is to call me, but um, that that I'd honestly rather hear from you sooner rather than later because uh, you know, if things go wrong, we want to address it. Um, but uh, in general, uh, and I, again, we cover it in this article. Um, uh, Copying, deleting, observing. What the heck is project synchronization, and how do I use it? Um, fundamental thing to understand is you have projects that live in the web world, and when I say web, I mean TerrainNavigator.com, I mean your mobile app, all that. They are one set of projects. Then you have a completely independent set of projects that exist on your desktop, on your PC. They are two separate things, as if, as if they're in two different buildings and you had filing between them. And what you're doing is you're, with project synchronization, you're not synchronizing the actual project. You synchronize the changes between the two projects and only the changes that are supported by both ends. For example, you have a marker on the desktop project. You have a marker on the mobile project. When those things, when synchronization occurs, if you move the marker on one, it moves the marker on the other, but they are not the same marker. It's saying move that other one, you know, and I'll just show that real quick. And we have uh, projects, project synchronization. There are plenty of webinars and videos and all that stuff uh, that uh, we've done over the years. Uh, Michelle did a good job on, a, on a several of them, um, you know, but if I go and grab this, this marker. Uh, well, let's let's uh, just put it on a topo map, for example. And you see that the um, marker is on the uh, the turntable there that of that railroad roundhouse. And if you need to know what's on your phone, you can also get your projects on the website. And that's I've got this webinar project. There it is. Hey, there's that new track I made. There's the marker. This is a preview screen, so you can see what's going on. 
this will tell you what's on our servers okay so this is what we know about okay if you've got stuff on your phone that's not on the server okay and sometimes that happens then the first thing you want to do and I'm just bringing it up on our phone on my phone Get it over here real quick. Hey, Ed, we've hit 11 o'clock. Yep. So I just want to see if we can wrap it up here. Yeah, I'll wrap it up real quickly. Under all projects, right here is where you can get the GPX file for your project. That makes sure that you can download it. It's off your phone. And then you can reinstall it to the Navigator Pro mobile app if you need to do so. Um, so if you're having a synchronization issue, the first thing you do is to see if it's on the server. If it's on the server, you're good, okay? If it's not on the server, again, get it from the phone, okay? Then if it's on the PC, it's not on the PC, the easiest thing to do is go to, is to make a new project. Remember, you're making a completely new project. This is not the same project that's on the web. Okay, and I'm going to say, you know, webinar two. Okay, and then I can say for this new project, synchronize it with a mobile project on the, that's on the cloud and get webinar. I'm going to choose full synchronization. Boom, boom, boom. And so now I will get a new project and look at that. It brought in all the data that was on the server. Okay. Then if you need to use copy and paste to bring things between projects, that sort of thing. Uh, again, if you're having problem with projects, you know, lost data, you know, when in, when in doubt, uh, we want to hear from you sooner rather than later. And how do you get a hold of us? Well, doo -doo -doo. there we go. TerrainNavigator.com is our website. TNP support at trimble.com. That gets to either Lisa and I, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And that phone number, again, 800-627-7236. Give us a call. If you get our voicemail, leave us a message. We will call you back. You know, nothing more frustrating than we see hangups because then we can't call you back <laughs> you know, when we know somebody's got a problem. So leave a message. And thank you, thank you Ed. I think that covers it. Um, yeah. Thanks everybody for joining. I did put a note in the chat session. This will be posted on our YouTube web channel. It's YouTube slash Terrain Navigator. Or just go to YouTube.com and type in Terrain Navigator. There's about 30 or more videos there. So those are great for sharing with colleagues that are wanting to learn Terrain Navigator Pro um, and for refreshing yourself on different topics. And there is one on projects, um, but it is a good topic, a complicated topic. We should probably revisit it again at some point. Um, yeah, also, we're happy to give certificates of completion if you get credit in your company for taking courses like this we're happy to uh to uh send you one um and of course always send emails or questions to tnp support at trimble.com we will get right back with you as soon as we can and uh thanks again for everybody joining i will end the recording session here and uh again we'll see you uh here again soon yeah and just to verify uh yeah the dennis Check those other webinars because there there are uh, covers we do cover it and if you need need if we want to do another one I'll do another one. <laughs> Thanks all. Thanks. Bye bye.